You may be seated. Let us pray. We come in the name of Jesus, thankful for this day and even this hour, that you grant us to be alive. Even though we've been invited to this place by the bride and groom, we understand that it's by your power, your grace, and your mercy that we are here. So we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Now, God, we ask that you dwell among us to receive glory and honor and to make sacred what this man and woman do now. We pray for the power of your spirit within and among them so that all things might be pleasing in your sight and beneficial unto them. We pray this in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Now hear the word of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 reads, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here in the sight of God in the face of this company to witness the joining together of this man and woman in the state of holy matrimony, which is esteemed by St. Paul to be honorable among all persons, and therefore is not to be entered into lightly or unadvisably, but it is to be done reverently, respectfully, discreetly, advisably, and in the fear of Almighty God. Into this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined, and therefore, if anyone can show just cause why they may not be lawfully wedded together. Let that person now speak or else forever hold your peace. I require and charge the both of you, Devin and Morgan, as you will answer on the dreadful day of judgment, when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you know why you cannot be joined together as husband and wife, speak now. For if any two people are joined outside of the will and way of God, their marriage is not lawful. <laughs> Devin, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinances in the holiest state of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep only unto her, so long as you both so live? If so, say, I do. I do. Morgan, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? to live together after God's ordinances in the holiest state of matrimony. Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep only unto him so long as you both shall live? If so, say, I do. I do. Who gives this woman to be wed? Her mother and I. We've already witnessed several things in, within this ceremony. The first thing was that the opportunity was given for any of you to say anything. And having said nothing, you now have nothing else to say. The second thing was that both Devin and Morgan were given the opportunity to say anything concerning what might keep them from being joined together, and them having said nothing, and then both of them expressing the desire to be one flesh, a transfer has occurred. The representative of Morgan's family, who stood on her right side, which is the side of authority, power, and identity, has moved out of the way, and Morgan has allowed someone else to take that position. A transfer has also occurred in the sight of God. When Morgan was born, she came into this world, and the recognized responsibility by both the state and God was the family of her birth. It was signified by the last name that she took, and that has been recognized by God up and to this point of her life. With the representative of that family moving away, and with Devin having taken that place, the recognized responsibility is now his. It's not a matter of power. It's a matter of responsibility. 
He now accepts that responsibility and she lets him stand there, saying that she trusts in his ability to fulfill that responsibility in the sight of Almighty God. The vows, therefore, that they expressed a covenants to each other, and they tell us and themselves as well what they will do and how they will be as husband and wife. If you would now turn and please face each other. Devin, repeat after me. I, Devin. I, Devin. Take you, Morgan. Take you, Morgan. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. And there too. And there too. I pledge you. I pledge you. My faithfulness. My faithfulness. Morgan, repeat after me. I, Morgan, I, Morgan, take you, Devin, take you, Devin, to be my wedded husband, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part, according to God's holy word. And there too, and there too, I pledge you, I pledge you, my faithfulness. My faithfulness. May I have the rings? Wow, oh, these are some nice rings. You now give to each other symbols of the mystery and majesty of marital love, and in so doing, you give each other several reminders. The fact that the love that got you here is not the love that's going to keep you in a marriage. There are two di different types of love. The love that got you here is passion. It's fire. It's emotional. It causes you to do, want to spend all your time being the other for the other. It's designed to propel you out of the life of self-desire to being that person for the other person. The love that keeps you in a marriage, however, is a different type of love. It is not based upon feeling. Because marriage in marriage, you are not going to feel the same way all the time. And that's what your vows said to you, that it's not about your feeling. It's about everything that you committed to do one for another, to be together better for worse, richer for poor, sickness and in health. You said you would love and cherish each other till death do you part. And these rings are a reminder of that gift and a reminder of what God will do for you. These are some very nice rings, as I said. But they didn't start out looking this way. They were raw. They had to be grind. They had to be polished. They're nice and shiny now. But at the beginning, there was no shine to them. These remind you when you look at them. Because cuts will come. Times will come in your marriage. And when you look at your rings, it tells you you're in a process. That someday your marriage will be as shining as these rings. And God will be apparent and glorified by what you do in your marriage. So... Take her ring, Devin. I want you to put that on her finger and look a square in the eye. Don't look away. Look her in her eye. <laughs> Placing it on her finger, repeat after me. As a pledge. As a pledge. And in token of the vows. And in token of the vows. Between us made. Between us made. With this ring. With this ring. I be wed. I be wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Morgan, taking that, putting it on his ring finger. Thank you. Looking right in those eyes. <laughs> Repeat after me. As a pledge. As a pledge. And in token. And a token. Of the vows between us made. Of the vows between us made. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for doing all things well, and we affirm today that what our ears have heard and our eyes have seen have been so much about you, and we thank you for what you have done. By you, Devin and Morgan have exchanged their vows to each other and have made a commitment to each other and to you. And God, we realize that because this is a spiritual thing, it's going to be by you that they are able to live out what they have just spoken. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray your blessings upon them 
that through your presence in their lives, Devin will be able to be the husband that you've called him to be, and Morgan will be the wife that you have called her to be, and that together they will be the couple that you've called them to be. Father, we pray that you might cause them to see themselves as ministers to each other, even though they may never be called reverend, pastor, bishop, or apostle. Let them realize that as husband and wife, they are to minister your love one to another, and we pray that your spirit will enable them to do just that. We pray that you will create a continuing sensitivity to each other, a deeper love for one another, a growing appreciation and respect for each other, and God, that you will continue to knit their hearts together that they may truly be one flesh. God, we thank you for the families from which they come, and now for that which is created new within both family lines by this particular union. We pray, God, that you might make them prosperous in all things. We pray that their household may be one filled with love, with joy, with peace, with contentment, faith, and gentleness, that the fruit of the Spirit might abound in their home, that people who visit might see something different and ask, how can they be this way? And that the both of them will be able to say is because you are real in their lives and you are real in their marriage. We bless you and we praise your name because this is your doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. We pray this in the name of Jesus and for his sake, amen. amen. Those whom God has joined together, let no individual put asunder. For as much as Devin and Morgan in the sight of Almighty God and in the face of this company have united themselves in holy matrimony, have exchanged commitments to each other, entered into covenant, and have declared the same by exchanging rings and joining hands, I pronounce them that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Your marriage will be a witness to others about the glory of God and how one is to live out the covenant declared to here today. The vows of your marriage will be an example to them of what they expect marriage to be for them. So I encourage the two of you to keep your eyes on God and the course that he has uniquely set out for the two of you. Forgiveness will be the greatest gift that you can give to each other. Marriages that last are filled with infinite acts of forgiveness that witness God's love one to another. Therefore, may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor shine upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you will live together in this life and that in the world to come you have life everlasting. We seal this marriage in that strong name the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. 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 Devin, you may kiss your bride. Turn, turn face me, turn face me. If you two would please turn and face the congregation. I'd like to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Devin Rayho. Yeah. Here we go, Mo. Good job, guys. I think my knees are equivalent.